One thing we've learned is condensation is the enemy of a liverboard. And when we think about condensation, it obviously leads to mildew and mold, as well as sweaty windows, mm -hmm. and ultimately uh, it'll destroy the interior of a boat. And for those of you that have owned boats and left a cover on it during the winter, uh, you know exactly what we're talking about. So there are three ways to be able to control what is really just a dew point problem. We're used to talking about the dew point outside. Well, you get a dew point inside as well. Join us on the Elliott as we realize our five-year plan with the kids grown up, moved out, graduated from college. We take the dog, sold everything, and kitted out the boat so we can cruise the Pacific Northwest all while living and working in the heart of Seattle. And there are three key ways to control that dew point. Number one is ventilation. Mm. Number two is circulation. And number three is dehumidification. So in this video, we're going to talk about how we approached all three. All right, before we get going on how do you control humidity in your boat, the first thing you need to do is figure out how much humidity you have in your boat. And if you use your windows to determine <laughs> whether or not you have humidity, uh, it's not very accurate. It's too late. Yeah, and it's, it's too late. The problem's already begun. We recommend getting one of these. They're pretty cheap. Up there on the top, it has the temperature, but more importantly, down on the bottom, it has the humidity level. Uh, we always try to keep our humidity level somewhere between 25 and 50%. That keeps the, the condensation low in the boat, but it doesn't dry it out too much where you start feeling kind of itchy or scratchy. Mm -hmm. um, and look, at the end of the day for a boat, uh, you know, as you can see right now, it's raining out here. So our humidity, uh, well, relative humidity is at 100% because water is falling from <laughs> the sky. But, you know, especially in the Pacific Northwest, we tend not to feel too humid because it's just cool. And, you know, you don't need much in the way of, of humidity to be able to start rain. However, inside the boat, because we live here, we introduce a ton mm -hmm. of moisture into the air. Uh, so what's going on outside isn't necessarily indicative of what's going on inside. So these meters just help out a ton to get a baseline of what we need to do and how we need to deal with removing humidity, circulation, or ventilation. And back in the day, when I was a kid, uh, this is how my mom used to deal with humidity on the boat. Literally, she used to take saltines and she would put them in the salt shaker or in the the sugar bowl because everything would clump up because there was so much moisture in the boat and that was just kind of a rudimentary way to deal with it we've come a long way now mm -hmm. there are options of things you could buy especially in areas that don't get a lot of circulation with air or it's difficult to remove the humidity um, do you want to show kind of that yeah so one of the things that we have discovered which works really well mm. is that they're like these little bean bags and they absorb all the moisture we stick them in our lockers and it helps and what this little guy does right now it is blue which means it is absorbing moisture when it turns pink then it's time to take the moisture out otherwise it's not going to be working as well so you just put it in the microwave 600 watts for six minutes dries it out let it cool off and you can stick it back in your locker huh. And that works really well, like we said, in the lockers, areas that don't get a lot of circulation. But when we talk about just you know, cooking and showering and all these types of things that we do to put moisture into there, just breathing and living, breathing. like mm -hmm. we were saying, um, you need something a, a little more aggressive to be able to really pull that much moisture out of the air and be able to get down to that 50% or, or lower so that you really don't have a lot of problems with condensation on your windows uh, and, and throughout the boat. We'll join Carlin on the bridge to talk about how we address that problem. Follow me, let's go. One of the ways we deal with humidity is we have a dehumidifier and we keep it up here on the bridge. There's a lot of moisture, it's cooler. There's water that will seep in. It's just part of a boat. And you can just set the humidity level to wherever you think is best for your location and your boat. On this particular model, it has a hose out the back and it just there's a hole down here and it just drips out the port side of the boat there are some models that have a bucket 
and you constantly have to empty them. This also has a bucket, so if you don't have a place to drain it, it just fills up. And that's great if you're on the boat, you can constantly empty it, but if you're not a liveaboard and you don't check on your boat that often, I recommend having a hose. What we have done in the past is put it over the sink and you can just have that hose constantly draining so even if you're not on your boat, then that works. And that's what we did with the little cobalt that we had. We had a drain in the sink and it just drained out of there. We left it all winter. It was outside on a lift and it was covered. When we uncovered that in the spring, it was like a time capsule. There's no mold, no mildew. It was beautiful. So highly recommend getting a dehumidifier. We'll put a link down below if you're interested in the one that we have, but that is something that we think that is necessary, especially in the Pacific Northwest. So in addition to portable solutions to basically dehumidify the boat, uh, like Carlin was just talking about on the bridge, you can also have air conditioning units in your boat that do a darn good job of being able to pull moisture out of the air as well. Uh, the Elliott has four of these, they call them heat exchangers, uh, a lot of people call them air conditioning units, but you can reverse them and they actually heat the boat as well. So heat exchangers are really... It's uh, like a heat pump you would have in your home. Yeah, it's exactly what it is really. Uh, it just uses the water uh, that the boat is floating in. That means that it has a condenser in each one of the units. These condensers basically just have the air run through them and they, like I said, they either heat the air or they cool the air. Uh, when they're cooling the air, they create condensation that goes into a drip pan. That drip pan then has a hose that goes into a through hole and it goes overboard. In the end, it's pulling moisture out of the boat. So again, we have four of those in the Elliott. Um, up in the Pacific Northwest, you don't see a lot of boats that tend to have heat pumps. It's something more that you'll see in the Florida area or down South California. Uh, but uh, you're starting to see it more and more in boats up in the Pacific Northwest because builders just inherently put them in. Uh, having these air conditioning units, you know, we didn't think we really needed them. Gotta tell you what, in the summer, it can get really hot around here. Um, and it really, it pays off. But again, more importantly, they pull a ton of moisture out of the air and help us control the humidity. That brings us to number two, which is circulation. You know, one might think, ah, having AC is, okay, fine, I don't have that on the boat. It's not something that is important to us. Uh, we can manage it with a, more of a portable dehumidifier. Absolutely makes sense. Uh, but if you buy a boat, we really do recommend it. Now. There's another thing that's really great that these particular units do, and that is they constantly circulate the air in the boat. They have to do it for a couple of reasons. One is that to be able to sense what the temperature is with the thermostat, uh, kind of in these tight spaces, they tend to have different temperatures down our stateroom and up in the pilot house can get really hot. So they have to have constant air flowing over the thermostat. The upside of that is it makes a very enjoyable environment, but more importantly, all of these windows that you see around us, because it's colder outside, rain right now is, is falling on them, they are inherently cooler than the rest of the objects in the boat. Just through convection, by circulating all the air, we don't get condensation on these windows. We've had to do work where we shut off the electrical panel uh, on the, the boat to be able to add systems or do modifications or maintenance, and how long is it? maybe five minutes and you get condensation all over the windows yeah it's that fast it's amazing so if you do have these air conditioning units or heat pumps in your boat I really recommend keep them running all the time as far as the air circulation it really pays off of keeping that consistency of moisture as well as like we said being able to help dehumidify the space inside the boat now if you don't have an AC unit Another option is even just running a fan. So it just is constantly circulating the air. If you have it next to a heater, even better to help circulate the air. That brings us to number one, ventilation. So let's head <laughs> to the head and we'll talk about 
one of the areas drives a lot of moisture into the air, yep. creates a lot of problems on a lot of boats, how we deal with it, how we're planning on modifying it, and then we'll be off to the galley. That's a space that has no ventilation right now, unfortunately. Yeah, so here we are in the master head, uh, shower behind us, you can imagine as you're warming up the water, it just starts pushing all kinds of moisture into here. Uh, it does have a portal, although, you know, when it's cold out or it's gross out, you don't really want to have your portal. So this space gets super high humidity, super fast. And obviously it just condensates immediately on all the surfaces. So a couple things that we'll do. We obviously have a little heater here. We do that um, for two reasons. It keeps the air circulation we just talked about. And the second one is it does keep by convection all of the surfaces a little bit warmer so that the condensation, uh, you know, it takes a little bit more time to be able to, to form uh, just because it's, it's warmer. And obviously the higher humidity, the higher the temperature, the less condensation you get but ultimately you're going to get condensation. And these little guys are only 300 watts. Uh, it's like a really large light bulb. So they don't draw that much and they just do a great job in this small space of just keeping the equilibrium just about right. Uh, so that brings us to ventilation. So this boat came with really small and very loud <laughs> vents. <laughs> uh, they're up here in the ceiling. They're actually placed pretty well. They have these cool uh, louvers that you can kind of turn so that they really do a good job of picking up uh, the, the moisture. The problem is they have like three inch ducting, which is far too small. These squirrel cages that are loud as hell are like 105 CFM or cubic feet per minute. Um, it's probably not too undersized for this small of an area, but it just doesn't draw the moisture out fast enough. Mm -hmm. So one of the projects we're gonna be doing next is adding basically increased ventilation flow from these these heads uh, to a quiet them down yes. and to get more moisture out of them because once we do that it's going to be a much more enjoyable experience but this is a lot of boats have mold and mildew in the heads and it's just you know it's because the ventilation is so darn poor in them uh, we generally keep pretty well ahead of that in this in these heads we don't really have that big of a problem but this will really help solve that problem for us which brings us to the last place in the boat where we drive a ton of moisture into the, the boat right and that's our galley and I'm super excited about this one. I like to cook. Mm -hmm. Have to. We're on a boat. This is where we live. Gotta eat. Gotta eat. So that's one of those things. You can obviously just open hatches, and, you know, some of the slide doors, uh, the side hatches. If it's inclement weather or it's too hot, water starts coming in, if it's raining, well, you get it. You can't do that every time. So you better figure out a way to get the moisture out of the boat. Generally speaking, dehumidification, it just can't do it fast enough. You've got to pull the air out with ventilation. So. To the galley we go. Yep. In the galley, we have the cooktop. Obviously, we cook, creates moisture. Even the microwave. If you're heating something up in the microwave, convection, that will create moisture. The sink, washing dishes, that creates moisture. And then my beloved Instant Pot creates moisture. So all these things has to ventilate somewhere. And this boat did not come with any venting in the galley. So we are going to address that and we're gonna fix that problem. Which is our next video, our ventilation project, which is about the least sexy thing you can do on a boat and how to spend a couple boat bucks. Those are a thousand dollars a piece, by the way. Uh, but if you're gonna live aboard, it's something that's, well, it's mandatory. Uh, it just gets overwhelming having that much moisture uh, being driven into the space and, and condensation, everything we've talked about, as well as the smells. So hold on tight, this is where it gets exciting. So join us on our next video. Don't forget to subscribe and we look forward to seeing you next time. Peace. Number one is ventilation. <laughs> you handing off? Alright, let's do this.